everybody, Javier here once again bringing you another exciting episode of Javier in the Air. This theme for today is whiskey and beer. And yes, it's uh, I'm bringing you two different alcohols. I know it might be something that you're not that interested in. In fact, I know some of you are not interested in that. Uh, but hopefully you'll uh, glean something out of it. I'm going to give you some uh, information about whiskey. I'm going to uh, interview my cousin, uh, Jesse. Uh, he and I were just uh, catching up and we were talking and he wanted to be in the interview and we found something that we could uh, talk about that uh, he has a little bit of passion about and that is uh, whiskey. So uh, I said, why not? Let's do it. And so I did and we had a great, fantastic interview. Um, I think everything went very well. We talk about uh, different whiskeys. We, uh, I break out my uh, grandfather's decanter. Uh, one of the few things that um, I wanted from uh, from his uh, estate, so to speak, from when he passed away. And um, I keep, uh, and in fact, I keep a certain whiskey in there, and you'll find out what that whiskey is when, when, I, when you get the interview. Um, it's out right now, but I need to run out and, and get some either today or this week uh, because I drink some for him, especially, specifically on his birthday in October. So I definitely want to stock up well before then because... It is virus time, and so I do uh, tend to sneak a little bit more than usual. Uh, not during the work week, so in case my mom's uh, watching, which she is. Um, but, you know, I get a little bit more than usual. So, anyway, so uh, we're, we're talking about whiskey and beer, but before we go into uh, either of those, I wanted to bring up something of kind of importance that I felt was important that I wanted to bring up. Um, and uh, a couple of things actually so uh, the first one is um, my friend my uh, friend from grade school that's how long I've known her I won't tell you the year because I don't want to spoil it for for anyone and I definitely don't want to give um, you know her age away um, but we've known each other since uh, Little St. Anthony out there in uh, San Antonio on Huisach uh, which uh, we sat on the other side uh, was the street that uh, me and my family grew up on uh, but uh, Little St. Anthony is where I met her um, she is a great musician uh, she's been doing this for quite some time uh, her name is Patricia Vaughn and uh, hey Patricia I hope you uh, get a chance to watch this uh, podcast what Patricia's been doing for the past uh, I'm probably not going to get it right, but I want to say probably at least a month, if not if not more, uh, has been doing a little bit of a um, live uh, musical show, entertaining, um, whatever for her fan for her friends and family and fans. And uh, if you have not heard of her, she is a very accomplished musician, really good music. Um, she's all over the place. You can reach her at patriciavon.com. And you can see some of the music that she has out there. Uh, there's a couple of ones that I really like. Uh, she's also part of a group, a uh, trio called the Texicana Mamas. And that has, uh, I want to make sure I have that right, uh, definitely has uh, Tish Inojosa, which I know uh, my mom and my aunt uh, would recognize her. And then also Stephanie Urbina Jones. Uh, they are all from, uh, grew up uh, in and around San Antonio. And so what uh, Patricia's been doing has been um, raising awareness for the San Antonio Food Bank. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who are currently uh, in between jobs, are just totally without a job, and uh, they are struggling. So I wanted to get that information out there. I will also provide the link at the end, on the end credits. So if you stick around to the end, you'll uh, get that. I might stick it on here if I can figure out how to do it um, I will provide you with her her link the SA food bank link and the Texacana mama's link since uh, I asked her and she was a nice nice enough to allow me to uh, put her name out there but it's for a good cause for the San Antonio food bank uh, if you have a chance and you are currently working and you are not struggling like some of the people are uh, the San Antonio food bank is a really great cause for you to donate a couple dollars here or there uh, and everything you can will go toward goes directly towards providing meals for uh, the underprivileged. So if you have a chance, go to the site, listen to her music, go to the food bank, donate. Uh, she also does the uh, a live performance, I believe, every 
Friday and um, so she'll talk about it there too so if you happen to have her on Facebook you can see that uh, if not definitely go to her site and go to the Texacana Mamas and check them out so uh, so that there's that so there's your opportunity to give back to the community that you're a part of I know I have a lot of friends and family that are still living in San Antonio um, if you don't live in San Antonio that's okay you can still donate there if you want or you can donate to your local food bank um, I know I donate to the Austin Food Bank and to the San Antonio one and if you can donate a few dollars here or there when you get a chance like I said if you're not currently struggling financially uh, then help help someone out uh, it's it's for a good cause and it's it's really the best thing that you can do uh, in the short term okay so uh, switching to who switching gears here so I know I got I got a little deep but switching gears here um, I wanted to give a shout out to all the uh, mathematicians in my family or curious about math or anything in that uh, realm uh, because it looks like after uh, at least 1400 years if not longer than that uh, there has been a new way to solve the quadratic equation yes for all those that are cringing right now who didn't enjoy math there are quite a few of us that did enjoy it and this was very interesting it's a it was a very short article that talks about it um, if interested you can let me know and I can tell you what to get, uh, how to get there uh, thanks to uh, James Takashita who let me know yesterday uh, during our workout that uh, he came across this article and so it's a really interesting article and what's really interesting if, if, if you're you know a math nerd or you're just curious about how things get solved is the, uh, the person that solved it uh, just looked at something in a new way it was something totally different um, that nobody had seen before they they went back and did research and went history books and mathematical history books and they went to where all the math uh, people gather I don't I don't know where that is but they did and did a lot of research to find and nobody had thought about it this way and it really simplifies what you have to do now if you like myself and many other people uh, were forced to uh, memorize the quadratic equation for school there is a much easier way to do it now of course uh, me barking on that ha uh, half century I don't really need it um, I do don't do a lot of mathematics uh, and even if I did I don't think I would need the quadratic equation but it's still pretty cool anyway and I thought I would throw that out there uh, cool of course is a relative term I'm sure I'll get some feedback on that's really that's what that's what you call cool that that equation right there is what you're gonna call cool and I'm gonna say yes that is <laughs> that is one, uh, one of the things I consider cool I'm really uh, really weird like that and I'll be throwing things at you throughout this podcast uh, I'm sorry throughout other podcasts of that note I think you saw that in some of the first video podcasts I did so okay so without further ado I'm gonna go back to what the original theme of the podcast was and thank you for staying in this journey with me as we finally got to a interview uh, this is my cousin Jesse um, he's technically my second cousin he's my cousin's son um, but I refer to all cousins as cousins um, some of them uh, that may be more mature than I I may call my aunt or uncle uh, but that's how we do it in my family and that's how I'm gonna continue to do it so he, this, this is my uh, cousin Jesse and I talking about uh, whiskey and uh, releasing the dragon uh, I really I, I'm really gonna get it, try to get a t-shirt about that I think it's I think it's a fantastic catchphrase that we need to to have uh, to continue to use uh, for those of us who enjoy whiskey and I think it's uh, I think it's a great interview so uh, for those of you sit back and enjoy my interview with uh, Jesse and I'm gonna uh, take it over to uh, interview hop interview hop take it away thanks All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Podcast Hob. Hey, everybody. This is Interview Hob. I'm here with my cousin, Jesse, uh, all the way uh, in close to Fort Hood, uh, Texas. And we're here today to talk about whiskey. And so Jesse has a couple of uh, whiskeys that he's going to show us and then he's going to taste. I'm going to show you one. I'm not going to show you what, what it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have one as well, whether it's good or not. We'll see here on, on the interview. And then I'm going to bring out something special uh, in remembrance of my grandfather. So, all right, Jesse, take it away. Hey, how you guys doing? 
Uh, I'm just going to start off with the uh, first one that I have already in my glass, which is a Crown Royal Texas Mesquite. What, tell us about the glass real quick, because that's a, that's a really cool whiskey glass, if, I, if, I'm, Thank if you. I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, my sister got me this for my birthday. It's got my initials right on the front of it, JFC. Nice. Yeah, I got it for Christmas. It, it's, it's really awesome. I, anytime I drink whiskey, this is my go-to glass now. I, I got a horrible glass, everybody. So uh, this is called a uh, kitchen cabinet <laughs> small glass. This is what I got. All right, go ahead. So it's a crown oil, which already you already know if you like whiskeys, it's going to have a clean finish. Uh, the thing about the Texas Mesquite is it has, if you're from Texas, that familiar smoke flavor of Texas Mesquite. Yeah. Uh, so it's got that heavy, strong flavor in the beginning and the clean finish that not a lot of smoke whiskeys have. So if you're trying to get into peat, or smoked whiskey, this is probably a good one to start with. Yeah, yeah. No, not your flavor? Uh, the, the peat is a little, uh, I mean, I've, I've had a bunch of them before, especially for specifically for, for tastings out at like Total Wine and stuff like that. And they always save right. that one for last. And there's a reason why yeah. they save that for last. So I like the Texan mesquite. Go on, because I'm sure it's not as, I mean, this is like a punch of that peat moss that they get in there. So Right. It's, it's, a, it's a little strong in the beginning. Do you let it aerate for a while before you drink it, or like you swirl it around a little, a little snooty? You swirl it around. Uh, I don't, I don't do all that just because uh, I don't know what that does. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I do like to taste the very beginning, real slow, because uh, it'll tingle the lips and the tip, tip of your tongue. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoy that tingle. Uh, one time I went to a uh, wine taste or a whiskey tasting in Maryland, and they gave us these glasses. Uh, this glass right here, as a matter of fact that had the whiskey oh. from Maker's Mark. Maker's uh, Mark, yeah. Wax yeah. on it. Very yeah. nice. And uh, yeah, from this one, anyone we got before that, by the end of that tasting, like all of this was numb, but it was it was a great time. Right. Uh, yeah, and that's where I taste, um, I forgot exactly what it was called. I can't, I, I'd have to look up the name, but it's some strong Irish name. And the guy compared it uh, he had one that was kind of smoky, and he goes, this is campfire, this is California fire. That's how he described the difference in the smoke. Right, right. So that's where, that's where I learned that I, I, I'm a fan of the smoke when it comes so where to would you be? where would you put the Texas mesquite in between campfire and California fire? Uh, I'm going to go Texas barbecue fire. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You like that one? <laughs> I do like that one. Oh, man. So what do you uh, – we're here just drinking it off the cuff like that but i mean do you like to have oh, something yeah. with it like an appetizer or something or you just like to drink it as is? just like to drink it as is uh i did find out um cigar why cigars and whiskey go together in that same testing if you get the right pairing it's pretty awesome um same thing with the cigars you know make stuff tingle a little bit i'm not a, no by no means an expert on any of this it's just stuff i figured out that i like sure. to do hey yeah it's all it's all about personal uh personal taste actually because I know people that love that peaty, smoky goodness as they call it. Um, yeah. When it comes to the whiskeys, I I don't <laughs> so I kind of go the other <laughs> way, um and then, which makes it good because then they can have drink their stuff and I can have my stuff and never the two uh, are gonna meet. Yeah. Um and so yeah, it, but it's personal. It is personal preference. You can't you can't say this is good for everyone because there's always gonna be some people that are like. Oh, that's disgusting. But when you find the right group that likes yeah. it, then it's good. Yeah, you know. Uh, one that I, another one that I have right here that uh, my wife and I enjoy very much is a Woodford Reserve Kentucky Straight oh. Bourbon. Yep. That one's delicious. And we'll put a little bit into this tin cup, which is another whiskey I'll talk about in a second, which is actually okay. probably my number one go-to whiskey. Oh, good. It's <clears throat> from Colorado. Okay. This one is Kentucky bourbon. So this one's Oh, that's more bourbon. Mm. That one's delicious. Not as much no smoke as far as the other one. No, but you had very that, distinct you just had that like, look of affection on there on your face when you did drink you were like yeah, mm. I, I I'm not sure though. Let me let me you might want to have some more. Feel free. We'll wait. We'll, we'll wait. For yeah, that's, that's definitely, yeah. That's delicious, man. Oh, man. Uh, I would recommend, recommend that one as well. 
Um, as far as the explanation of the taste, um, it's got a little bit more kick on the back end. Okay. No punch of fire or smoke at the very beginning, just that straight bourbon taste and a little bit of kick at the back end, but very smooth compared to other ones. Like we were talking about with the Jack Daniels, uh, it's, <laughs> you don't have to cut it with anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, talk a little bit about that. We were talking about it earlier, but uh, for people who may not know, when you were talking about Jack and Coke, there's a reason why people do it. Yeah, uh, once you get a, a, a taste for whiskey, you'll understand why people cut Jack with Coke, because Jack by itself is just not very good. I, I don't care to do it. Um, I, I, I want to compare Jack to like maybe when you first started getting into beer and you thought the only choices were Bud Light or Budweiser or maybe Miller Light, and then you discover there's a lot of other beers out there. Like, oh, this opens up my world by so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's some there's some family members I don't want to name who. No, uh, no. who just live for their bud and bud light you know and yeah. i'm like hey more power to you but um, yeah as, as that's you your thing go right ahead as you expand your palate and, it, and again it's, it's up to individuals you know as, as your as my palate expanded uh certainly from doing all the reviews i was doing on beer and then all the mm -hmm. tasting parties that i've had you're you you just start really discovering seeing the nuances of all the flavors that come into something like when i was in my you know uh, don't hear this, Ma. When I was in my teens, <laughs> when I was in my twenties, yeah, you drank uh, for a very specific reason. You drank to get drunk. Um, right, right. At least I know I did, and my friends did. Um, yeah. You didn't say you didn't sip it. It wasn't like, hey, I want a sipping tequila or a sipping whiskey, for example, that you can sit mm -hmm. around with family and friends and talk about, you know, life and whatever while you're sipping on these things. It was meant to be, bang. Hey, what's that? Bang. And you just kind of, you're just, you're just done. So yeah. you're right. As you got older and you started drinking more, uh, some people still like, you know, their things. I know my aunt uh, loves her, uh, used to love her pearl. And, uh, you know, one of my grandmothers used to love her pearl also and Schlitz mm -hmm. and all those. And that's what they would drink. <laughs> um, and they drink other ones now, but I mean, still, so yeah, you just kind of get used to it. So, um, was that the was that the good the really good one, or you got one this more? This one here. Yeah, uh, I've got one more. Um, oh, and and, we're in, uh, when you get a chance, show the bottle of the Texas Mesquite. We didn't get to see that one. Oh sure, I'll show you that one right now. That's the Texas Mesquite Crown Royal. All right. Now this is something that uh, I have to uh, my niece Dallas, and yes, I'm name dropping on her. Uh, <laughs> likes to drink the and, and don't cry. She likes that apple. That, that Crown Royal Apple uh, whiskey. And I'm like, uh No, yeah, we don't, we don't fruit you whiskey Dallas. around here. You know who you are, Dallas. Uh, just. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't fruit whiskey around yeah. here. But, you know, teach their own, like we are saying. Well, yeah, except for that. <laughs> except for that. <laughs> except for that. Everything else is okay, but that, no. All right, so even though we were just trashing it, uh, Gentleman Jack. I don't know if oh, well, see, now, Gentleman Jack is a totally different uh, beat. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. they, they have their low end and then they have their, you know, which is what we grew up on. And mm -hmm. then they had they started realizing that there's people that want to hire, and, or at least uh, we, yeah. we just discovered that. And so they right. have Gentleman Jack and they have other ones. So, all right. So uh, let's, let's see that one. All right. Let's see Gentleman Jack here. It's, it tastes like a cleaner Jack. Uh, <laughs> it's got a very clean finish. It still tastes very much like Jack, but it's a clean finish. It doesn't give you that, uh, that you know, when you're the feeling when you're, you're letting out the dragon just at the end of yeah. your whiskey. I like that, There's letting out that. the dragon. We need that on the shirt, <laughs> letting out the dragon. And then just someone like, like that. Yeah. I think that would be so awesome. Yeah. I'll see if I can There's get them. We can, put them on the, we can put them on the podcast and people can buy it. Maybe this should be my next video, huh? The three whiskeys here. The three whiskeys, like the three <laughs> wise men. They're just going to have the three whiskeys. Do that for one of the holidays, the three whiskeys at Christmas. Then you can get yeah, your mic on also, and then you can you can spar about what's the, what's the best whiskey. And, oh, yeah. 
go that well you don't want to get too far you know like ah, but i mean you want to just be like right, i think right. this whiskey is better and i think this is why and then you can have people talk about it i think that'd be awesome all, all done with the british accent of course if you can pull that off man <laughs> i will i will put that on this podcast and just have you going at it in a british accent because oh, i can man. never pull it off for long maybe three seconds a couple words at best yeah yep, that's about yep. it but you get me drunker yeah. and i think I'm really good. Uh, I've been known to speak <laughs> fluent Spanish when I'm drunk. According to my really? friends and family, no, no, not at all. But, <laughs> but you, I say I do. You. And I'm like, I can speak perfect Spanish when I'm drunk. And they're like, no. 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 They're like, it's you're okay. just sad. That's just sad. You're just sad. <laughs> you're just sad to do that. And I was like, okay, whatever. I okay. tried. I tried my best. Exactly. So, gentlemen, Jack, uh, all right. So, I'm going to show you two that I have. Uh, one All of right. them is an old favorite or was a favorite back in the day. And then there's the one that I was hiding here. So I had a whiskey tasting uh, six, eight, nine months ago, something like that. And this was one of the bottles that was left over. Um, so um, this is called Wolfhound Irish Whiskey. It's actually from Ireland. And uh, you know it's good. It's got a dog on it. I mean, it, it's got to be, sure. yeah. be good. Uh, I've right. been sipping it while we were while you were having your fantastic whiskeys. I've been oh, uh, having this. It's definitely, actually, it starts heading towards the um, uh, the peat. Um, this says here it's uh, smooth and rich with hues of deep golden amber. Uh, I just think it's kind of smooth. It's kind of. A little bit of a punch to it. It's only um, 80 proof, so it's not that bad. Um, it's not. It's not. I've had. I've had the ones. I haven't had the Texas Mesquite like you've had, but I've had okay. the other ones before, Gentleman Jack, and that. This is nowhere near that. This is more towards the lower end, in my opinion. Um, okay. There's a little bit of a spiciness to the back end of it. You know, as you're. you're uh -huh. it. It's not letting go the dragon. It's, but, it's, I mean, that's a thing. That's a thing now. It totally is. Every time I have a tasting now, I'm gonna be like, I'm letting go of the dragon. <laughs> Glad I could be part of that. It is kind of smooth though. It grows on you, you know, kind of like a moss or fungus. But I mean, it's not. It's not too bad. <laughs> um, I've certainly had worse. It's pretty good. I don't remember what uh, what we voted on this, but it, it didn't win. But it's not bad. It's middle of the road. Let's say middle of the road. Uh, right. It's not a it's not a campfire and it's not a um, California fire. It's kind of like a Boy Scout fire, kind of on the okay on the back end. Like you know, Boy Scouts they yeah. don't do it very well, so the fire is kind of crappy. You know, and right. it's just, you know, and you're like, well, we'll pee on it tonight and get rid of it. It's fine. So <laughs> peters out a little bit. It's yeah, good. I got you. So let me get uh, the one my grandfather uh, used to drink. And I know I'm doing this live, but. Totally worth it. Oh no, I drank it all. <laughs> oh my god, so that's embarrassing. All right, so uh, what I was talking about is Jim Beam. For those of you who may <laughs> not know, that is that was the drink of choice uh, of many people back in the day, and uh, the choice of. Uh, my uh, grandfather used to drink Jim Beam. And like Jesse was saying, he would cut it just about everything. I never saw him drink it straight. It was always Jim Beam and Sprite, Jim Beam and Coke, Jim Beam and anything else. <laughs> anything but anything. Jim Beam. He wasn't one to drink it straight, or at least I never saw him drink it straight. It was always with something. So that may tell you something. As someone who'd been drinking, drank it for years and years and years, Right. Always cut it with something. So uh, <laughs> I never know. I'm I'm assuming that it was uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't it wasn't great. So let's, it did what it needed to. It did what it needed to. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, after my grandfather passed, I actually kept the um, crystal decanter that he had. Now uh, this is pretty old. I don't know how old it is because I think he's had a couple uh, over my lifetime. Um, uh, or maybe this is older than I think, but um, it's crystal. It's really nice. And I usually keep Jim Beam in it. So that goes to show you 
this may have been one of those virus times or when I was uh, speaking tongues, as people <laughs> say, uh, and I was drinking, drinking a little bit too much Jim Beam. Um, so um, I have this, I drink, I usually have some in it. Uh, I need to go get more. And I, I remember him on his birthday, um, which is the uh, 14th of October. And then also for grandma, I have some on the 27th of October as well. So, uh, you know, I get, I get, them, I get two for one out of, out of that month. And so it uh, works out pretty good. Um, so, all right. So we, we talked a little bit about whiskeys. We talked about how we like it. We talked about uh, letting go of the dragon. Yep, letting go of the dragon. That's kind of, uh, we definitely need shirts. We definitely need shirts. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, if you're thinking about any type of whiskeys, certainly go buy and buy some uh, that Jesse talked about. You probably wouldn't want to buy Wolfhound. Or maybe you do. I don't know. Maybe you'll like it. And, you know, it's your choice. Hey, it's up to you. Um, yeah. certainly buy some Jim Beam, give it a go. You can buy the little <laughs> bottles, but you don't even have to, you, you don't even have to get the big bottles. They always have little bottles of Jim Beam at the front. Have one yeah. of those say Javier was right. And you can drop yeah. something in the comments and, uh, Hey, Jesse, I appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks hey, for, thanks your for time. having me. And I'm sure I'll have you on again. We'll talk about other things. I know we're probably going to talk about music because we got those guitars out there in the back on the wall. Yeah, for sure. So we'll, we'll have to get to those one of these days, but we'll do that soon. All right. Sounds good. So, thanks a lot, buddy. All right, thanks. Hey, thanks, Interview Hav, and thanks, Jesse, for uh, the great interview. Uh, definitely, uh, for those of you who have not uh, been into whiskey and are thinking about getting into whiskey, uh, when we go back to normalization or as close as possible when it comes to getting out, Total Wine has some great classes on whiskey and bourbon and tequila tasting. I highly recommend those. I've been to a couple of them. They're fantastic. Um, and if you haven't, just start. Um, if you're really into, you know, drinking, uh, not heavily drinking, uh, I'm not condoning anything like that. But if you want to try something different and you want to try some whiskeys and you're wanting to expand your palate, uh, then I highly recommend you starting with um, some whiskey. I actually, I would think that you should go through like a lot of us and start on the dark end, the uh, bad end of whiskey and then work your way up. It'll definitely expand your palate. And you may know, you may like the peat uh, or not. Uh, so a little bit of background uh, history on, on the whiskey. Um, it's been around for uh, quite some time. The information that I found was that the distilling techniques were brought to Ireland and Scotland sometime between 1100 and 1300 by monks. However, and this is what I couldn't find, is where it's coming from where. They're saying they were brought to Ireland and Scotland, but it doesn't say where it's coming from. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming England, but I don't know. I, I couldn't find it in the short time that I was looking for it today. Um, so uh, if you happen to know, give me a shout out, send me a direct message, comment on here uh, on my YouTube channel, and let me know uh, where, you, uh, where you think it, uh, or where if you have any articles that tell you where it's coming from. I, again, I'm assuming it's... Um, the you know uh, England but I don't know for sure and I believe I may have been told that during one of the tasting classes but I don't remember that so uh, anyway so I hope you enjoyed a little bit about the whiskey uh, and in, enjoy uh, you may be sipping some now while you're uh, while you have it and if you do I highly recommend uh, keep sipping away um, I know I will be having some later on but I will be doing a beer first so um, I'm going to uh, show you, I'm going to do a reverse today. I'm going to show you an older um, beer review that I did back in March. I think it was March, yes, it was the last, I believe it was the last review I did in March, I'm not sure. Uh, this is from March 29th. This is an Imperial Mayan. So I'm going to drop that in there and I'm going to let y'all review, uh, review it, see my review of it. Uh, if anybody has had it before, certainly uh, comment on it. And, and then when I come back, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do my own beer review. Uh, once again, I have beers bring, uh, bringing, uh, bringing in from the Brutique. And I'll bring one here and I'll have it uh, while I give my tasting. Maybe I'll give a different shot of uh, my house. I know I said I was going to do that last time, but I didn't get to it. I apologize. So uh, take it away, Imperial Mine. Hey everyone, how are you doing again? Um, this one uh, today is from Oddside out of Michigan. This is their Imperial Mayan made with uh, coffee, cinnamon, nutmeg, and habaneros. It's an Imperial stout. 
Uh, so let's see what it looks like poured out. Here it is. Nice and dark. I already know it's going to be good. Wow, that is fantastic. If you really like Mexican chocolate, this is the one for you. This is like Mexican chocolate but cold. Overall, for this stout, Mexican chocolate stout, I'm going to give it... Nine and a half. Nine and a half thumbs up. It's fantastic. Uh, go out to the team at uh, Brutique and pick up some. Uh, they do have curbside. Uh, and I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Hey everybody, I am back. Uh, so that was Imperial Mayan by uh, Oddside. Uh, really uh, interesting uh, beer. And uh, you should go try it out. If you have a chance, go out to the Brutique. If you live in the Austin area. And say hi to Scott and Jana. Uh, and um, just try it out. I mean, and they have hundreds of beers. So you can definitely try out a bunch of different ones. So today, uh, let me block the sun a little bit. I moved so that we can have a little bit different view, but then that sun is really coming in on that window. So uh, let me see if I can keep it here. Uh, so right now we are, uh, I am looking at a lager beer, all one word, German style Pilsner. So let me see if I can get that. German style Pilsner, uh, going the wrong way, 4.9 uh, ABV. And this is brought to you by the Sigma Brewing Company uh, out of Houston, Texas. I haven't uh, I haven't tried this before, so let's give it a shot and see. We're gonna go ahead and open it up here, and then I'm going to pour it. I'm gonna stop looking at the camera because I'm gonna pour it wrong and spill it all over myself. So you can see here, it's a very nice, light uh, looking beer. Um, let me hold that up. Oh, Last Stand Brewing Company, by the way, providing the glassware. Thank you very much, Last, last Stand. So you can see it's very light. You can even you know, continue to see the um, the lettering on the back side of the, of the glass there. So very nice uh, good light little head to it even though I poured slowly so that's not a bad go really good really smells like the Pilsner beers that I'm used to and grew up with really light finish really good um, nothing over the top nothing too strong nothing too weak um, it's good on the palate very light and refreshing so if I were you uh, and you wanted to do this is a good starter beer for the evening um, you want you want something light because you don't want to go something too heavy yet uh, besides once you start having the heavy beers uh, the stouts and the porters and the ones that have alcohol of like 9 and 10 and stuff like that you really can't go back to um, lighter beers so this is a really good Pilsner to uh, start your evening off with or it's a light afternoon after you've done some working out or you've done working out in the house uh, like I do a lot of so it's really good I'm gonna go ahead and give this uh, eight thumbs up all the way up and so uh, I hope um, uh, you get a chance to go out there to the boutique uh, pick up some beers uh, I know I will continue to, to have beers from there. If anybody has a specific beer they want me to try out, uh, please feel free to let me know. If there's a specific topic that you want me to talk about, please let me know and I will find someone that I can interview about it. Thanks again to uh, my cousin uh, Jesse for uh, providing a fantastic interview talking about whiskeys. Um, if anybody's interested, please uh, pass on and share with family members and friends and so on. Uh, the more that I can get people to see my podcast, the happier I'll be, of course. Um, maybe even starting uh, letting go the dragon merchandise. Uh, I'm sorry about earlier, it's letting go the dragon. So um, uh, we'll talk about that and other things. Uh, anybody who's interested in wanting to be interviewed, uh, be sure and drop me a line. Uh, if you're on my Facebook page, you can drop me a message. If you are on uh, YouTube channel uh, please subscribe um, and then you can uh, put your comments in there as well uh, anybody I will talk just about 
anything uh, except for religion and politics. Uh, I will keep those offline. They won't be on this podcast. Uh, but anything that you want to talk about, um, certainly feel free to let me know, and I will certainly enjoy interviewing and learning more about you, and everyone can learn about you and your, what you're passionate about and what you'd like to talk about. Uh, and so I hope everybody is will have a good rest of the week, and I will see you again uh, next week. Have a have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye.